Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the very first audio edition of Behind the Microphone. I am Jerry Strauss, and you are here on layfieldreport.com, and we are here to unearth, if you will, sort of explore the lives of so many of the personalities that you've come to know and love over the years uh, from the worlds of pro wrestling, mixed martial arts, etc., etc. Some stuff you may have never known before, some stuff you may have wanted to know and just never had a chance to. Now, we're going to break open those stories, those lives, those careers, and uh, what a way to kick things off uh, here on the line. I have one of the defining, one of the groundbreaking, and one of the uh, history-making uh, divas in the history and lore of world wrestling entertainment, uh, Tori Wilson. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, thanks so much for having me. No problem whatsoever. Now, Tori, um, I wanted to bring you on the show, and typically uh, what this show is, is about is more focused on people that we don't get to see in the spotlight that much, the announcers, the referees, timekeepers, people that you've seen uh, around these sports and these genres of sports entertainment that we love. You are someone who has certainly had a lot of spotlight, but what we really want to get to know about you is, uh, well, a couple of aspects of your life as far as really getting to know what it was like to be in your position during your WWE career, your wrestling career, and then also um, to sort of follow you to the present day and uh, all the things that you've gotten involved with since then and, and sort of taking us through that transition to an afterlife <laughs> beyond the the uh, mat, if you will. So, um, sure. <laughs> so uh, l- let's start at, at sort of the beginning. Um, your your um, your start in professional wrestling came after uh, you had already been working as a fitness model. And I wanted to stop right there because I feel like fitness model is a term, uh, uh, a career that's sort of like pro wrestler in that if you ask the average person about it, they kind of know what it is, but they don't really know how you get to that point, exactly what it means to be. Yeah, I think it's, I think, you know, fitness model is something that's becoming more and more, you know, known, uh, you know, especially compared to when I was doing it. I think people really didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so much uh, the the fitness industry in general is just such a huge billion-dollar industry that there's there's so much more to it than just, you know, your average bikini picture as well. But, yeah, same thing. I think with wrestling that a lot of people, you know, just don't really get it. Right, right, sure, it's sort of a mystery. So, I mean, just to reiterate, uh, it, when you become a successful fitness model, that means you're appearing in magazines, um, you're in certain competitions that we certainly know about, like, you know, different fitness modeling competitions and stuff like that. What what else does that entail as far as the, the things that are part Well, of that? you know, when I got into... When I got into fitness, I really, um, it actually, just to go back a little bit further, um, I, I had an eating disorder in, in high school. I was anorexic and bulimic for a short time. And um, I really one day just pick, picked up a fitness magazine and admired these women's bodies that actually looked very healthy and fit. And um, so I started, you know, getting more and more into it and reading these magazines and hanging up pictures of these girls and following their diet and exercise routines, which for me was a great way to get out of this, you know, starvation of my body. But it was a little more, you know, it was still a little obsessive in one way, but it really did help me get out of my eating disorder. And um, I actually decided to compete in a fitness competition, and that's kind of how I got my start, my first fitness competition. There were a lot of photographers there, and uh, photo shoots and flying to LA from Idaho. I was still living in Boise at the time, and it just really opened my eyes up to um, the world and you know wanting to see more of it. And uh, that's kind of where it started to snowball. Okay, and so you talk about a lot of travel and things like that and seeing the world. And I guess maybe there was some sort of a crossover appeal to what would eventually become your next. 
a career, and I, I've heard the story, I've seen the story, but I, I want you to tell just the general story. How, how did you get involved in professional wrestling? Well, you know, um, because I was in some fitness magazines, um, I actually, not because I was in fitness magazines, but I went to a show, but with that being said, um, doing a lot of fitness modeling and everything, I ended up moving to Los Angeles to pursue an act, uh, acting career as well as, you know, fit, further in the fitness industry. And um, my agent at the time happened to be the same agent that Hulk Hogan was using. And uh, we ha- we also had a mutual friend, and my ex-boyfriend was a big wrestling fan. And one night, we ended up being invited to a WCW show and got backstage and met a bunch of the wrestlers. And um, Kevin Nash, of all people, remembered me from a fitness magazine and approached me and said, you know, would you be interested in doing a little storyline with this kid named David Flair? You know, I had no idea, really any idea what I was getting into. And, um, you know, I thought, mm, this sounds kind of cool. Yeah, I'll try it. And uh, they called me up the following week and, you know, flew me out, I think, to Atlanta for the first time. And I started doing these little vignettes, nothing to do with really wrestling. I wasn't even actually out in front of the crowds yet. And uh, things just snowballed very quickly. And within, you know, six months, they were offering me a contract. And it was just for a girl from a very small town in Idaho, it was all very exciting. <laughs> so just to... Just to clarify, before you started knowledge of, of professional wrestling? No, I did not have any knowledge. I didn't. I had wow. no idea what I was getting into. Unbelievable. <laughs> so so you entered WCW, and at this point, this is, uh, this is what, like 1999? Um, yeah, it was. Okay. A long so. time ago. <laughs> no, no, not too, not that long ago. Um, um, don't say that, jeez. Um, okay, so you're in WCW. You're getting involved in storylines. Um, what was your role as far as uh, the, like throughout your time in WCW, which I guess was a couple of years? Um, how? physical were you encouraged or forced to get like were you actually participating in matches during that stint no not at all actually you know for me all i really wanted to do when i moved to la was you know become an actress which if you watch my my vignettes on wcw acting was probably not the best avenue for me (laughs) to be going into but (laughs) Um, you know, I really had no desire to, to be a wrestler, and they didn't ever really express much desire for me to be a wrestler. But then towards, you know, after a couple of years, there became a point where all of a sudden I think somebody had the right idea that we should all be these wrestlers. And we were all sent to a wrestling school. And um, I think that was, like, very terrifying for a few of us. But, of course, we're in wrestling, so. And, and that was when you were still <laughs> with learn how to wrestle. Value? Right, right. Yeah. That okay. So you were at some point they they flipped the switch on that while you were still there. Um, so before before that happened, were you basically just sort of looking at it as a as an acting gig? I was as an acting gig. Like I don't know if I would really call it an acting gig, but a way for me to get on camera and you know somewhat act, and um, you know obviously. It was a great way to um, get my face out there. So, you know, it was, and probably the number one thing for me was the fact that I was getting to see, you know, the country. Because, <laughs> right. again, I just always wanted to see the world. That's awesome. Um, now, you you came in with no prior wrestling experience, no street cred, if you will. Um, what was, how, what was uh, your reception like as far as, the people that you worked with, people who, you know, presumably um, had more experience than you. Was there any sort of uh, period of needing to earn respect, any sort of resentment from those who you had to share or perhaps even take camera time from who uh, maybe had worked in wrestling for yeah. longer? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, I'm sure there was probably much more than I even had a clue about because it was all so crazy to me. 
Um, I'm sure there was a lot of animosity, but, you know, here and there I could feel it. But, you know, just to make things clear, I was, you know, extremely shy. (laughs) And I don't know how. My mom would call me every week going, who is this girl I'm seeing on TV? Like, this is not you. Like, if you met me, like, I am the complete opposite of what you would have thought (laughs) on TV. So for me to go, you know, to be dropped off backstage, which, you know, I had this great agent that was, you know, you know, flying me in first class and <laughs> limos and everything, and a lot of these wrestlers weren't getting that. Of course, like, I had no clue that I was going to be pissing people off to begin with. And then on top of that, I'm really shy, and I'm not – nobody clued me in on the fact that you're supposed to go shake everyone's hand and, like, you know – be you know super outgoing and, and um I was just very intimidating so intimidated so of course that you know that did work against me a little bit but um you know I really did have a, a few people that clued me into that pretty quick mm-hmm. and um for the most part you know you're always going to have people that are going to think that they deserve the TV time that you're getting and it's not what do you do <laughs> right right. I mean, uh, the one thing I was I, I wanted to ask you, I was I was thinking about it earlier, is that you know you, you sort of assume that those who walk into professional wrestling or any organized sport or anything like that, who maybe are perceived as weak, um, might get tested and maybe um, a bit a bit of resentment for for being there. But you walked in as as an athlete of a different kind. You were a fitness model, but certainly you know. There had to be a level of respect for those who also understand bodybuilding and fitness, and you know, wow, like you know, this girl's ripped. She's <laughs> right. But so, I'm sure it probably was a lot different than them hiring just a bikini model. I right. mean, I, I was definitely an athlete coming in, and you know, it definitely helped that I had the same agent that Hulk had, so I knew my agent was telling him just kind of like watch her back, and I knew that. Kevin Nash was, you know, felt partially responsible for me. So I had, you know, at least I had some people that were looking out for me. And, right. um, you know, it, it really wasn't as bad as you would think. That's that's great. Um, so this is now the tail end of WCW. Um, and you, this is the point where you had sort of emerged as one of the more popular and prominent personalities on the show. At, at this point, before – the WWE bought the company. What was your mindset as far as professional wrestling? Did you think that you were going to be in this for the long haul? Never. Never, ever, ever. I (laughs) thought it was going to be something that would be fun to do for a couple years and just to go with the flow. You know, I've never been a one that, you know, has one specific plan and no matter what comes in my way, I'm just not going there. I've always been one that kind of, you know, goes with the flow. So I didn't really think too much into it other than this was fun and what a great experience, and I'm going to take it for all it is. And, uh, you know, hopefully it will lead to something else. I had no idea that it was going to become what it did for me. It was actually pretty amazing. Within the first couple of weeks, you know, back in the day when you could actually, like, go to the airport and and go to the gate and wait for people. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember getting off plane. I remember, you know, it was probably about a month in, I guess, and getting off planes and there being, like, a huge crowd of people there waiting. Like, I had no idea what I was getting into and how big this wrestling, you know, industry was. And um, it, it, looking back, I think I just want to shake my head and go, oh, my God, what an idiot. Like, you're so clueless. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's pretty amazing. Unbelievable. Culture shock, I'm sure. Um, For sure. Yeah, so then comes the big sale, the end of WCW, the merger into the WWE. Um, We've heard so many different stories of different situations for different talent. Some of them were brought to WWE and put on television right away. Some of them went to go sit at home, wait out contracts, things like that. Some just sort of disappeared for one reason or another. Um, what was your experience from the time you found out that this was happening to the time that you ended up pretty quickly on WWE television? Well, I actually, it's it's kind of funny because 
about the last year that WCW was was in business with Turner, um, they had I had signed a two year contract and close into the second year they had uh basically tried to like cut my contract in half. Mm-hmm. Even though I had a contract with them. And something weird happened with the contract and I I was like, you know, maybe this is a sign. I'm just okay, I'm not gonna opt for the second year and I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do in LA again. Mm-hmm. And so I actually ended up not being working with WCW for a short time. And at the time, I was dating, you know, Billy Kidman. And um, so when the purchase happened and he had his meeting with Vince and JR, um, he actually got me a meeting with them hmm. as well. I don't know. If, I can't remember if they called him and asked to meet me with me or what, how the situation came up. But I ended up meeting with them the same day that he did. And, of course, you know, they hired me right then. Wow. So you weren't working – with anybody at the time you were you were floating off on your own and thinking this was it for you yeah yeah totally <laughs> you thought you got out and they pulled you back in <laughs> wow very interesting okay so that so you went uh to WWE and this is during this is like right after they announced the the purchase or pretty soon after that yeah, yeah. No, I was with them. I had already signed with them when they, you know, announced the purchase and, and uh, oh. I mean, before everyone went on air and everything. So okay. Definitely included in the whole purchase, but uh, a lot of people don't realize that I was kind of like, okay, ready to walk away from wow. the WCW experience. Very interesting. Um, fate, definite, definitely one of those things that points to the existence of, of perhaps um so yeah. yeah so you get to wwe and you are you end up being to my recollection one of the former wcw uh personalities that gets on tv quickly uh early and often um uh, yourself and stacy keebler featured uh, pretty heavily and pretty early on as i recall um it, oh, yeah. what was what was the reception like as far as now we already talked about you coming to WCW with your level of experience. Now you've got a little bit more street cred, but uh, now you're stepping into a new locker room full of divas, um, many of whom have a lot of experience and all of whom have more experience in that company than you. Um, so how did that go? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can say that I did have, you know, I definitely knew a little more about the, the way things were supposed to go. So, I, you know, I was, I was a, a little more hip to all of what you should do. But, um, you know, of course, there were some girls that were not very excited to myself, be nice and be gracious and hope that eventually they would warm up to me, which they did for the most part. <laughs> okay. Um so I without getting too much into that stuff, but uh you know, let's just talk about your day to day lifestyle because you're used to doing one thing with WCW, certain schedule, certain travel. Now you're with WWE, which I, I would imagine was was it in, immediately a busier schedule for you than you had been used to? Yeah, I was. I wasn't even really doing house shows with WCW. I think maybe I did some in the end, but um, it, it was definitely a, a bigger schedule. But, you know, it. I kind of, even when I was with WCW, I, I kind of, that was, you know, obviously when they were, the ratings weren't as well as they had been in the past. And so I had always kind of thought of WWE as, like, the superior product. So, of course, when we went over to WWF at the time, you know, it was really, really exciting, and and I want all of a sudden I wanted to learn how to wrestle, and I, you know, I would beg to be hit with a chair and like things that they would never let me do, of course. But you know, there's there was it was just a whole different feeling over there. Hmm. So that was it. You, once you made the switch, the thoughts of leaving the business at that point were over. You were fully committed, and you were all in, and you were uh, looking to become a legitimate 
in ring wrestler all the way, huh? Yeah, yeah. And how did that how did that work out? Because I I mean I remember at the very beginning, um, I, I don't I'm trying to remember how quickly it was <laughs> um, before you you guys were put into the ring. Um, like who who was given the assignment of sort of working with you, training with you? How did that initial training go for you? Um, well, Fit Family was Fit Family was always, you know, a big part of the the group that trained me. Um, Dean Malenko, uh, Arn Anderson, you know, of course, Billy really helped me a lot too. You know, there's a court like there, the thing about wrestlers, which I I just really appreciate, is that you really, really do have to love wrestling to to mm-hmm. live that life. And and it, it would be you'd be really hard up to to find a, a wrestler, especially a guy, because girls, you know, sometimes you don't know like myself, you don't know even know what you're getting into. But these guys, you know, live and breathe it, and so they just really want to teach someone that's eager to learn. And so it, it was great because I always had people that were more than willing to to teach me. Mm-hmm. So you say that you have to love it in order to be in it for a long time and be successful. So how, let's see, it's an eight. Would you say that you loved it for the majority of that time? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, there were definitely times that were hard just dealing with some of the people that weren't happy that I was there, they were, you know, like anything. Mm-hmm. But um, I loved it. I loved going to work. I loved, I loved going... Uh, even if I sucked at wrestling, I loved going out in front of the crowd and, like, just creating some kind of reaction in whichever way you could. And, um, you know, it's just that performing. It was just, you know, a, it's a rush, the, the travel, everything. I loved everyone that I worked with for the most part, and, and I really did fall in love with it. Do you think that, um, and I want to even go back to when you were thinking about uh, starting an acting career, um, you described yourself as very shy um, earlier in your life, do you think that there was maybe a subconscious part of you that was looking for that outlet where you'd feel safe being outgoing and that's sort of where acting came in and how you were able to be such a great performer in front of the camera for uh, professional wrestling for almost 10 years? Uh, most definitely, yeah. I think it's there's something a little more safe about going out there and per- portraying somebody that people think you are. Mm-hmm. And um, if it was me walking out there and even though I used my own name and, and people thinking this was, like, truly me, um, it would be a lot more intimidating. Not to say that I was not scared every single time I had to go out there and perform, but the rush just was, was unbeatable. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, so let's go back to your WWE schedule. And you talked about how much busier and tougher it was. Um, than you had experienced previously. Take us through, in your experience, um, uh, just the typical week of WWE diva Tori Wilson in maybe one of your busiest periods. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, every week was four days of shows minimum. And, you know, during the busiest time when I was doing a lot of promotional stuff, uh, you know, there would be times that I would actually be lucky to come home for one day <laughs> just to repack. Um, but, I did. And, and, you know, I think that one thing that people just don't really understand about wrestling is that there's two televised shows, but there's always those non-televised shows. And so many times we would, you know, go straight from being on the road in the U.S. to leaving the U.S., and we would be on the road for three weeks straight and maybe have three off days, you know, splattered throughout of, of basically travel days. And um, it, it definitely takes a certain kind of person to keep up with that. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you spoke about your love of traveling, seeing the, the country and seeing the world. In the end, um, do you think that a lot of that traveling that you did was it was it fulfilling or was it 
uh, often too busy um, for you to actually take a look around and enjoy what you were seeing. You know, it was uh, to me, I was still fulfilled. I I could I couldn't really complain. I would say that you know sometimes when we left the country, it would have been cool if we would have had more time, say in Paris or something. Right. Even if it was, but I always made do. I always I always soaked up every minute that I could. If we flew to London, you know, as soon as we landed and we got to the hotel, a lot of people would go to sleep and rest up. Well, I would, you know, get a cab and go see the city. And so I just, you know, no matter what it was, no matter what small town in America it was, I just really appreciated whether all it was was me stopping at a gas station and seeing the gym and driving to the arena and feeling the crowd. I, I still appreciate that, and I still, you know, remember all these little towns. I was actually just, I was driving to a, a small airport in New Jersey the other day, and I just got really nostalgic because I remember being in the middle of BFE somewhere with Victoria and Candace Michelle at some karaoke bar, and it just, it just really brought back that the memories of traveling on the road and just how much I cherish all of those mm. memories. Okay, um, so you had already spoken about F- Finley. Um, he's somebody who's mentioned um, in a lot of interviews, a lot of even autobiographies and stuff like that, being absolutely instrumental um, in building the women's division during a stratus um, on this, well, my column that's part of this website. And she heaped tons and tons of praise upon him, as have others. Um, what exactly was it about Fit and his approach that was so helpful uh, for the women's division? Well, I mean, I think the fact that he had a, he really had a vested interest in, in helping us build it and and really did want to, he really cared. I mean, just the fact that I, I really don't think he saw it as just a man's business, which largely it is. Um, and he saw the value that we could bring to the table. And, you know, for me, what was so great about Fit was that he was extremely patient (laughs) and he worked with, you know, our our limitations and um, just really made it a a point to help us feel comfortable in everything that we were doing. Okay. Um, Now, obviously, you were one of, quite frankly, one of the most popular WWE divas ever of all time. Um, You must have had a tremendous amount of attention from fans, both in person, through mail, people trying to look for you, people trying to find you. Um, What was the experience like uh, of being on the road and having destinations where these fans knew where you were going, at least around the arenas and probably had ways of finding <laughs> what, what, just how unsettling or, or enjoyable was it really to deal with that type of uh, fan love? Um, it was never unsettling. I, I like maybe it would be unsettling if they were yelling obscenities at me, but they <laughs> never were. <laughs> um, I, you know, everyone, like, I just think that wrestling fans are the greatest because they, they feel like they know you, and in a way, I, like, I feel like I know them. I feel like there's an immediate kinship when you have that, that common thing. And um, I, I never, I never really felt weird. Uh, you know, I was always traveling with people, and uh, no matter where I go, I think it's amazing that someone can come up to you and tell you they appreciate what you do. Wow, that, that's that's the. The nicest thing I've ever heard anybody say ever about anything. But <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so, so you're with World Wrestling Entertainment till 2008. You've um, been just a consistent presence. Did you did you feel at any point like your your interest in what you were doing uh, had had waned at all? Back now, were you happy with your career from from start to bottom there? I definitely, you know, I I really can't complain. I I really wish that I would have learned and maybe had a little more of desire to learn how to to be better in the ring at an earlier point in my career. It took me a while to really, really, you know, want to put my body through what I did. Um, But I, I... 
I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change any anything about those, you know, nine nearly nine years. Um, you know, my body, my back would lock lock up on me, and I I would literally sometimes just lay on my couch crying for thirty minutes, not being able to move, and eventually that led to me having to have back surgery. And you know, for the last year or so, I was you know I was starting to get tired of the travel. The travel was definitely the thing that was starting to wear me down, and um. That's after I had back surgery is when I just kind of realized it wasn't something that I wanted to do anymore because of the travel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I basically decided that I didn't want to go back. Do you think that maybe the sort of worked uh, against your love of the travel? Because, you know, traveling is certainly a whole lot less fun when you're in any sort of pain, let alone back pain. Yeah, I think that and the fact that, you know, I just, I was starting to want to, you know, I was just starting to miss the little things like, you know, having a barbecue on a Saturday with my family or like being able to go to a wedding and not have to worry that I'm, because I asked for time off or, you know, just things like that. Like the little things you just want to have, you know, a little bit more of a regular life and, and not feel like you're you're missing out. Right, right. So it was time. It was a good time, I, I guess, to get out. Do you um, do you look back and at, at this point, and, and do you miss that outlet, that rush that you spoke about? I, you know, sometimes I do. I just um, sometimes when I put on, you know, wrestling, I, uh, you know, and I, I, I just always get the chills when I see certain people come out, I and mean, you hear the music, and you just feel that crowd. That I miss that just feeling a really good crowd and having them be so into everything you're doing. There, there's really nothing that compares to it. Well, since then, um, you've moved on. You, I, I know you even before you left World Wrestling Entertainment, um, you got involved in. Uh, did you have your own store? I know you had your own. You worked with a clothing line. Did you actually own a, a store or two? Yes, yeah, I I um I opened up a store in Texas and started a clothing line as well. I've always been a bit of an entrepreneur, so mm-hmm. that was another reason that I decided I didn't really want to go be on the road on, anymore. Okay. So, yeah, it's kind of tough to do But I think I went a little too far to the extreme. <laughs> you went too far which way? I I think I went too far to the extreme to have a normal life, to go from traveling the world, you know, you know, the only person accountable for schedules and everything like that. I mean, it was it was definitely a big adjustment. Absolutely. Now uh, we we got a press release not long ago, big announcement that you are now involved with a new endeavor with Phoenix Salon Suites. And you are going to be working as basically they're like a spokesperson, right? Right, right. I'm I'm working as their spokesperson. They've got some amazing new products that they're coming out with, and of course they were looking for somebody to help um, promote them. And of course I had to try the products to make sure I liked them. And <laughs> I'm really excited because you know I'm I'm after all I, I I'm a girl. <laughs> You're a diva. <laughs> and I like those girly things. <laughs> whether, you, whether you like it or feel like it or not, you will always have the label of being a diva from now on. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yes, you're right. I always will. <laughs> and Phoenix, uh, this is a chain of, of uh, salon suites, correct? Yeah, the chain of salon suites, they, they're, they're, they're only about two years old, but they're growing at a crazy pace. And now that they're coming out with their products, um, they're going to grow even faster. That's great. And it's pretty exciting. And you, their website, for those who are interested, is um, Phoenix Salon Suites, but it's uh, it's Phoenix without the O, P-H-E-N-I-X, <laughs> salonsuites.com. Um, and, yeah, it looks like some super fancy stuff. So, uh Ladies, if you're listening, this is a, pl- a place you want to check out. Guys, if you're listening, this is a place that uh, you probably want to spring for for the ladies when you've done something wrong. And uh, <laughs> Tori Wilson uh, is, is fully backing this thing. She says that it is 
Diva approved. So um, that's a pretty Diva good approved. Topic. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so topic with you. Um, Total Divas is a huge hit on uh, E Network right now. H- have you seen the show? I have. I love it. I love it. Really? Do you? Do you? Uh, how do you? How do you take it as far as the depiction of diva life? Does it ring true for you? Any of it? Uh, or does How about keeping it real? Keeping it, it real, it, huh? Yeah. I, I will say that I have, like, I have thought on numerous occasions how much better it would have been if they had this show when I was traveling with Candace, Michelle, and Victoria. But, you know, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> These new girls are tame. <laughs> I can only imagine what we would have seen in years gone by had the cameras been rolling twenty four seven. But uh, so you yeah, think it's thank a... God they weren't rolling. <laughs> <laughs> and that opens but I definitely whole... love those girls. That's yeah. that's awesome. And um, someday I'm sure maybe a tell all book could be in your future. That could be Possibly. the next. Step. So are you um, looking towards uh, going back into any form of either sports entertainment or entertainment in general at any point in the future? Are you looking at um, yes, getting back um, you know, I, I, um, I, I'm definitely a little bit more of an entrepreneur these days and working on some fitness-related products, but I'm actually – working on a show right now that I'm co-producing, um, kind of related around the fitness industry. But, you know, it's uh, still a project in the works, so we'll see. Okay. Definitely not shy of the camera yet. <laughs> Do you feel like all your time uh, in front of the camera has helped you just in general to break out of that, that mold of shyness that you had when you were younger? Do you think you're a more outgoing person now? Oh, for sure. And then and you add on the fact that I was actually beating people up in a ring. That <laughs> definitely helps me <laughs> come out of my shell. <laughs> and it's a great topic of conversation when you meet people. Yeah, well, not only that, but you don't have to be shy in front of people when they're all scared of you now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Walk tall, Tori Wilson. Um, Tori, um, <laughs> how can people uh, follow you? Um, are you active in social media? Yeah, I am actually. I've I've got Twitter. It's Tori Eleven, and I'm on Instagram, um, which is Tori Wilson, and of course on Facebook as well. Okay, so everyone can follow Tori's uh, present and future as we have reflected on uh, a pretty amazing past and amazing career. And uh, who knows? We never know if uh, maybe someday we we see you popping back up on Monday nights, on Friday nights. You just never know. <laughs> um, you and just I know there's never know. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much for being a part of this and shedding some light into what it's really like to be a, a total diva. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks and for having me, Jerry. No problem. Good talking to you. And uh, everyone, we will see you next time on Behind the Microphone.